in this video, I'm going to talk about CSMACA, Carrier Sense Multiple Access Collision Avoidance, a MAC protocol or MAC algorithm used in wireless networks. So for a wireless network to be able to detect that there's a collision, it needs to know whether or not a packet collided or whether it was delivered successfully. So because in a wireless network, due to signal strength attenuation, you can't detect that there was a collision at a receiver because you can't observe the receiver directly, you need some feedback from the receiver as to what's happened. And so the way this is commonly achieved is with link layer acknowledgements. And so the idea is that if, say, A is transmitting a packet, a data packet to B, if B successfully receives this packet, then what it does is it sends an acknowledgement back. This acknowledgement packet can be very, very short. And this is occurring at the link layer. It doesn't go across multiple hops of the network. It's directly, say, using a wireless Ethernet between A and B. And so the advantage of this is if A starts transmitting, say, a data packet to B, but at the same time, C transmits a data packet, and the two collide, then B will not send an acknowledgement. It doesn't successfully receive either packet. It sends no acknowledgement. A knows that it might need to retransmit, or that it should possibly retransmit. Of course, you could have collisions on acts. Acts aren't perfect, so it can be that A does some unnecessary retransmissions. But generally speaking, A needs some feedback from B to know whether or not the data was delivered successfully. If these were very, very uncommon, right? So in the same way to say in wire Ethernet, where it's possible, very uncommon that a packet doesn't collide and yet doesn't arrive successfully, uh, then you might not need an acknowledgment. But the fact that wireless, the signal strength changes so much over time and that data bit errors are common means that you want to have some positive feedback. So using link layer acknowledgments, uh, this is how CSMA CA works. So the idea is you start off with some initial random back off. Um, it can be very small, say if the channel is idle. You sense the local channel and you transmit after the back off. So the basic idea here is listen, if the channel is idle, then transmit. If you don't hear the packet acknowledged, if you don't hear an acknowledgement, then back off again and retry, so transmit again. If you hear the packet acknowledged, then you can send the next packet. This is the basic CSMA, Carrier Sense Multiple Access, CA, Collision Avoidance algorithm. And it's collision avoidance because you do this back off again. So let's look at this more concretely. What is 802.11, so Wi-Fi, what does it do? So 802.11 has two modes. One is CSMA CA, or it has many modes, but it's the common mode that everybody uses today is CSMACA. It also has another mode, common, reasonably common, called request to send, clear to send, which we'll talk about in a future video. But here, let's talk about CSMACA. So the basic approach is that you pick an initial wait period T. This often starts off as being very small. Um, and what the transmitter does is it periodically checks the channel. If the channel is idle, on one of those checks, it decrements T. So it's counting down T. So T represents the amount of idle time the transmitter wants to hear before it'll transmit. So when T reaches zero, it tries to transmit. If it hears an acknowledgement, um, then it accepts the next packet of a transmission. All's good. If it doesn't hear an acknowledgement, it doubles T. So it'll exponentially back off longer and longer. Um, if T grows to be larger than some large T value, then it just drops the packet. Rather than waiting or blocking on a given packet, um, it'll just drop that packet and try to go on to the next one. And so here's a little, little walkthrough. So here's our sender S, and it picks an initial T value here. T. The channel here is busy, so it's not decrementing T. It starts decrementing T. T becomes zero here. And so it transmits. It transmits this packet. Unfortunately, it doesn't hear an acknowledgement. So then it picks a new T, which is in a range twice as large as the original T. Um, it decrements that T. There are periods of busyness. There are periods of idleness. Then finally, T decrements. Let's call this T2. Uh, finally, T2 decrements to zero. It transmits. It hears an acknowledgement. Great. It goes on to the next packet transmission with the initial small t value as the back off. So CSMA works, CSMA CA, CA works pretty well, but it has a bunch of problems uh, which really do occur in practice. So the first one is something called hidden terminals. Um, and so this occurs when, uh, say we have this node B in the middle, like this could be say your access point, and you have two nodes A and C who both want to transit to the access point. So the basic problem with CSMA CA is that a transmitter 
is listening as to whether the channel is idle at it, when really what it cares about is whether the channel is idle at the receiver. It could be that the receiver is hearing something and so can't hear the transmitter's packet, but the transmitter can't tell because it can't hear what's happening at the receiver. It wants to sense the receiver's state, but can actually only sense its own. And so a hidden terminal is when two nodes, say A and C, both try to transmit to a receiver, or it could be even to adjacent receivers. Um, and the receivers can hear both of them. So B can hear both A and C, but A and C cannot hear each other. So A is hidden to C, and C is hidden. And so A starts transmitting, B starts receiving the packet, C doesn't hear it, so C says, aha, I think the channel's clear. It transmits, B hears C and A's packets, there's a collision, B hears nothing, both are lost. So this is something which CSMA, CA can't solve because you're sensing locally, but you want to be sensing what's happening at the receiver. So you can imagine this happens a lot in AP networks. So the second problem is what's called an exposed terminal. And this is kind of the, the reverse of a hidden terminal. So imagine this case where B wants to transmit a packet to A and C wants to transmit a packet to D. But now A can't hear C, right? So A can't hear C. Well, what's going to happen? B starts transmitting to A. All is good. A is receiving the packet. Now C wants to transmit to D. D can't hear B. And so this is fine. D is absolutely capable to receive a packet from C while B is transmitting. But C senses its local channel. And it hears, aha, wait, 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 B is transmitting. I can't transmit. And so it doesn't transmit. And so C is exposed to B. And so whereas a hidden terminal is a case where someone transmits when they shouldn't, an exposed terminal is when someone doesn't transmit when they could. So the third problem that occurs um, in CSMAC or even in just wireless networks in general is that let's say we have our nodes A and B and A transmits a packet to B and, but there's no acknowledgement. So is this because there was a collision? That is, there was some other node C transmitting at the same time and that interfered? Or is this because suddenly the channel between A and B became very poor, that the signal to noise ratio went down? There's a weak signal like say, you know, somebody, some person uh, uh, walked between uh, the two. Problem is A can't tell. It doesn't know whether or not this was this loss was due to a collision or just poor signal. And you can imagine it might want to respond differently. If it was a collision, it's going to want to back off because you know, it, can't, it doesn't want to contend with the channel. But if it was due to a low SNR, then it wants to perhaps reduce its bit rate, transmit slower so it can support more bit errors due to the, uh, the lower um, signal strength. And so there's often this issue and people are starting to solve this problem now and figure it out. But where A tries to transmit to B, it's lost due to a collision, A interprets that as being a low SNR so it starts transmitting at a slower bit rate, which then means its packets are longer, which increases the chance of collisions. Or it transmits to B, it thinks that it's because it's due to a collision, so it backs off more, when really, if it just transmitted again immediately, it would have been fine. And so in a standard CSMA, a simple CSMA algorithm, distinguishing these two is really, really hard. Nevertheless, because it's so simple, and when there isn't a uh, tremendous contention, when you do have good SNR, CSMA works pretty well. CSMA-CA is the general MAC protocol you see used in Wi-Fi networks today.